My name is Marcus Puckett. I'm a system administrator too for Synchronet. What I do is I'm the head of the service desk for a managed services wing, so I put out the fires, make sure that the environments are stable and that the fires don't occur. We are a partner with VMware and we do deployments, uh, services, do a lot of professional services. That's, that's a lot of what we do. And then we're growing our managed services to be able to incorporate uh, VMware monitoring and alerting both proactive and reactive to be able to stabilize customer environments and get them the best performance that they can out of their products. Today is vSAN. We have a private cloud that we host in our data center. All of our servers are on vSAN and we have um, customer servers that we host in our data center on our hardware that is on top of vSAN. One data store, uh, you don't have to carve out LUNs and LUNs and LUNs and then map them to data stores and data stores and data stores. Good performance. It makes it really modular too so we can grow as needed. Uh, that was actually the case that I submitted to do this talk was about another customer that we host in our rack at our data center. Wanted to do small entry, to have a small entry footprint, but then grow as their business acquired other businesses. Benefits are being able to grow you know, as needed. Uh, we don't have to drop you know, half a million on a SAN for all the storage that we may or may not use. And uh, it just eases the pain of a lot of storage. You still have to deal with the, uh, the networking of it, making sure that everything is networked together. Um, but that radically simplifies the storage administration piece uh, some of the problems that I have with uh, traditional SANs whenever I'm administering them is uh, I, whenever I do uh, edit operations, I have to be extremely careful. Um, it requires a lot of planning up front to deploy the LUNs to make sure everything matches all the way through from end to end. So that when I know that I have a data store, you know, one, uh, whenever I turn it off on the SAN after I'm done using it, I'm not turning off the wrong one and taking down the entire environment. Uh, things like that, you know, I don't have to deal with that because it's just one data store and it does what I need it to do. So another big use case that we do is uh, Horizon View for VDI customers. Uh, we use it internally and the contrast between our internal use, which is off of an NFS store, contrasting that with virtual, with a vSAN, uh, deployment is like night and day. Our, our internal one is kind of slow and kludgy. It's not a big central part of our day-to-day -day work, so it doesn't impact us as much, but I, I can see how big the difference is between the performance of a Horizon View deployment on an NFS target is compared to how tightly it works with vSAN and how much performance and throughput vSAN does with the, uh, f uh, the read and write caching with the flash drives. So the, the hybrid, we haven't gotten to mess with a lot of the flash, all flash vSAN yet, uh, but we've, I'm sure we will soon here. Starting out, there was some stability issues, but I don't see them the same way that I do. There were bugs, uh, there was firmware, the HCL came, seemed a little fluid, but things have stabilized significantly. There haven't been any major outages that were something that I would say wasn't our fault or wasn't due to like a configuration error somewhere in the stack. So, um, and the thing, and the best part about it actually was whenever we did have these stability issues and outages, vSAN never dropped data. It wasn't until we had gone through like five or six uh, dirty reboots that we started to have it drop the objects from the metadata tables. So we couldn't address the objects and see them, but they were technically still there. There was just no owner of them. So if we had gone in you know, with a higher level engineer that knew how to take ownership of those back, we would have been able to get them back, but it was a VDI deployment, so we didn't really care. We just scorched earth and began again. Um, but you know, data resiliency has been something that vSAN evangelists really talk about, and it's something that they really do. Uh, you don't, you're not dropping data as long as you stick to the HCL, of course. Scalability is good. We haven't had to scale a lot. Uh, we we scaled from a three node to a four node, and we're trying to decide whether to scale that to a five node or not. Um, 
it's pretty easy. Once you have the networking piece set up, like that's one and done. Uh, upfront costs, and then you just bolt everything on the side because you just blast out the same config, same quotes, same everything, get the exact same hardware, stick it on, scales out. Obviously it saves rack space, and that's something you have to consider. Uh, it's an important thing because you got to pay for power cooling. Um, if you got to get more cabinets because you got another sand coming in, that's more money for you that you might not be fully utilizing, and it really helps with that efficiency. You know, you, your rack space is doing as much for you as it can because you've got the compute, the storage, the memory. Uh, in some cases, with we'll view the uh, GPU offload just for us, all in a little for you, uh, for you rack. And we have three of the exact same deployment just like on top of each other. Uh, two of them are customers and one of them, are, one of them are, are, is ours. And they, uh, you know, 12 view of stuff, just one on top of the other, where it would be probably the full rack, rather than just you know a quarter of the rack, and that's that's very beneficial. Once you get to the vSAN team, they know what they're doing, like bar none. They they are incredibly receptive. They're very good at giving you root cause analysis uh, analyses and helping you work through issues. The dedupe is awesome. The, uh, the stretch clustering is crazy, in my opinion. It's, it's really cool. Uh, we've been talking about it internally, and we have a lot of school districts. And it actually makes a lot of sense for a school district because they have the fiber runs between the buildings. So they can, they can hit the 5 millisecond, 10, 20, 40 gig uh, requirements of the network. And it, it would be a good use case for them, I feel like. We'll have to look at the r reality of it, of course, because they got announced like yesterday. Uh, but it's really exciting to see some of this stuff, and especially dedupe. Dedupe would be really cool. It's really kind of taking that mindset that I see a lot of people have that vSAN isn't you know, enterprise ready and putting it to rest. We've been a strong VMware partner for a long time, and we saw uh, my, my direct boss is John Nicholson, he's a V-expert, a uh, huge, huge, huge storage person. He really identified the value that it was going to bring and how uh, impressive the technology was to have this, you know, kind of decoupling from the, you know, the big sandbox that sits in the corner. And it really makes a lot of sense for certain use cases. There's some use cases where a traditional SAN is the right move, you know, if you want the capacity and stuff like that. But the vSAN really helps, especially with the VDI. That was where our biggest play was initially, was uh, Horizon View mixed with vSAN. We usually will do a four node deployment. That's, in our opinion, uh, the best configuration. Three nodes the minimum, uh, but we like to do four so we can do rolling upgrades without losing our N plus one fault tolerance. And so when we, initially started using this, uh, and technically it was before I started working there. When we initially started using this, we'd roll it out and just take advantage of the performance improvements that it would make. Getting the right cache with the flash drives, you know, allowed us to spin up, spin down, fast login times, uh, fast application delivery, really makes a difference. To my knowledge, we didn't ever do like Citrix or you know anything like that. We didn't actually deploy the uh, VDIs that are on traditional SANs. So I think that we have just done pretty much all vSAN coupled with VDI because it just makes so much sense. Probably go with a seven right now, probably in like six months, it'll be an eight or a nine. Uh, just, you know, growing pains obviously. Uh, it's a fairly new product having to deal with some of the baby steps, you know, and the HCL, getting the HCL right. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the ready node things that they've been doing with the, they've pretty much replaced the HCL with ready nodes. That was actually our initial offering for vSAM was that, and so that actually simplifies the process a lot, it helps to bolster and make sure that you're not deploying something that isn't going to work. You gotta size the compute the memory and the storage, right? You gotta make sure that all those are gonna make sense so that you're going to be able to hit that within the con con confines of vSAN. You know, you only get the one flash disk and you wanna make sure that you're hitting at least 10% flash to uh, magnetic disk. And so you, you have to you just have to evaluate it, you know, make sure that it makes sense and don't discount it just because you think it's not enterprise ready. 
or that it's too expensive. Uh, if you're looking at a traditional SAN, you're already looking at a lot of money anyway. So uh, USAN is a contender in a lot of cases. Like 100% of how I handle it, you know, IT forums and stuff like that, uh, to kind of get a feel, get a gauge for how people, who, what people's opinions are about products. Because uh, I see, I spend a lot of time on them and I get, you know, different feedback from different things. And I'm not the one that's asking the questions, I'm just watching other people ask the questions and seeing what the responses are and uh, having to gauge off of that. So peer, peer review is extremely important.